Oh, I am buzzing because I just caught the latest Bad Boys movie. I watched it last night, Bad Boys 4, Ride or Die. Now, when Bad Boys 3 came out in 2020, I actually wrote a, uh, an article that's on my website and it keeps getting hits. It keeps getting quite a lot of views actually consistently. And uh, in that, I looked at the claim that was made in the very first Bad Boys movie in 1995. You remember, Will Smith's character, Mike Lowry, Detective Mike Lowry, had a Porsche 911 Turbo. And uh, at the time, he said it was the fastest car in the world. That was a claim that he made famously in the movie and it actually forms part of the climax of that movie, if you remember. I'll try not to put too many spoilers in this video. Um, so in this latest movie, in Bad Boys 4, um, he still has a Porsche. So actually, if you remember, in the first one, he had the 911. In the second one, he actually had the Ferrari, uh, which was director Michael Bay's for our own Ferrari, famously. And the third one, which came out, like I said, in 2020, uh, 2020 he came, went back to a Porsche 911, but it was a Carrera 4S which I always thought was a bit weird because Mike Lowry was made out to be um, an eccentric rich person that wanted to be a detective, but enjoyed the finer things in life. And he certainly knew his cars. He was very specific about his cars. And um, so it's, to me, it was a bit odd that he only had a Carrera for us. Nothing wrong with a Carrera for us. Fantastic. You know, for me, he'd be brilliant. But I mean, for him, I was like, yeah, he should have something more than a Carrera for us. That's, I think, been corrected in the latest movie because he goes back this time to uh, a 911 Turbo S. Uh, 992 version, so the current version, uh, so to speak. And um, so, but what I thought I'd do in this video was actually look at that original feature that I did about whether or not his car in that first movie actually was justifiably the fastest car in the world, as he claimed. And along the way, since I've just seen the latest movie, I might even do a review. A brown car. You know what, get, let's get the review out of the way first because, oh my God, I've got to say, uh, that it was incredible. It was fantastic. If you haven't seen it, you've got to go and see it. And if you have seen it, you'll know what I mean. I think not only, I, I mean, I would go as far as to say that I think this was potentially the best movie in the franchise so far. I mean, literally, like they've taken all the best ingredients of all of the Bad Boys movies and all of the typical things that they have in Bad Boys movies. They mix them all together into this one. And I think they created like the perfect Bad Boys movie. And it's not just me saying that, because I think that um, apparently it's been a box office success. And in fact, it's been one of the few movies that at the cinema have actually done well in recent uh, times. Because to be honest with you, like I like going to cinema. I like watching movies in the cinema. And um, there hasn't been, I've seen a few movies recently and, and, and they've been good, but they haven't been like, Wow, you know, that was, and, you know, cinema prices are getting more expensive, you know, going out is more, and you, and you don't see a movie where you go, oh, yeah, that was worth it. Nowadays, you're seeing a lot of movies going, yeah, it was, it was okay, it was not, yeah, it was all right. You're kind of like justifying the fact that, you know, you spent the money on the ticket and stuff like that. But I tell you what, saw this one, and I literally, and we went as a family, and we all enjoyed it, all of us. And my wife is particularly picky huh, when it comes to movies, she's very fussy, um, but she was laughing her head off and she loved it and we all came out and we all said we want to see that again <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean it was like wow i mean the thing is about this movie um it's got the two main characters it's got the two actors you know uh mike larry will smith mike larry uh, and uh, martin lawrence as the other guy um and you know and 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 there's that chemistry there's that 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 also that history now that we've got over the three movies over the four movies that we know so much about these characters. We know their little foibles. We know how they interact. We know their friendship. And so that all comes into it. So the comedy comes into it. So also, like, there's only no to like, build up to it. They can just jump straight into the action. And the jokes start coming, you know, thick and fast immediately from the opening sequence, which involves the car, by the way. Um, and you get it straight away because you know these characters so well. So there's that aspect of the fact that you know the characters, so there's a sentimentality to it, and there's a nostalgia to it, particularly like going back to the 90s. And there's also the aspect that they've thrown a lot of Easter eggs in here. They've thrown a lot of cameos in here. I mean, there's lots of little things in there that you will find that you'll be like, oh, oh, oh yeah, oh. And, and there will be some characters in there that you'll be like, you know, oh, they finally found their place. And uh, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But I just think that, you know, the, 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 the whole thing, uh, and, and, then, and then you've got the way that they've put it together. 
because okay I, I mean let's be honest this is not serious intellectual literary cinema this is a popcorn muncher this is loud this is crazy it's ridiculous it's wall-to-wall -wall action and gags and you know smart one-liners it's it's all of that lots of comedy lots of explosions but the stunt sequences are brilliantly um, choreographed and filmed it's one of the things right goes right back to actually the first and second uh, Bad Boys movies. If you think about that sequence in one of the movies where they had the shootout through the wall, you know, where, the, where they were on one side and, and the gangs were on the other side. And remember then that Ferrari sequence down the motorway, the highway, which was, you know, they, they used new techniques to, you know, film under cars as they were flying over you and stuff like they were using a go-kart and stuff like that so there were lots of things that they were trying to get new angles and new ways of showing the action and in this movie as well you see that you see a lot of stuff there that you're just like whoa you know and if you've seen behind the, the scene stuff which will smith has been posting on his instagram i mean there's a sequence where he's literally like and this is not a spoiler because it's on his instagram but he's actually he's acting he's, he's in an action scene so he's firing but he has the camera as actually mounted on him. So he's actually controlling the camera. So he's turning the camera as he's doing it. So you get a, a first person action shooter game kind of um, feel to it. But, but also like the jokes, they come thick and fast, the gags, the action, the dialogues, the characterizations, the action sequences, the way that it's been filmed. I mean, it's just, it's just a brilliant laugh. It really came together really, really well. And I think that, you know, it's done, uh, I, I just loved it. And I think that, for sure there's no there's going to be a fifth movie now i think it's it's inevitable because this one not only is it great but it's been a success and uh it's almost like a comeback vehicle for will smith so if you all know that um he had a bit of an issue at a larger a large ceremony um a few years back and um uh, this is kind of his comeback from that and it's also like it's almost like um there's a kind of, in a way, he makes up for what he did. Wait, no, I don't suppose he makes up. No, that's not the right word, actually. It kind of, um, and even not, it's not even correct to say he plays on it, but I think that he kind of addresses it in a way. And um, he kind of um, pays penance for it. I think that's probably the right way to do this. Um, and there's a sequence in the movie where it's not only funny, but it's quite poignant, and you just think, oh, okay. The other thing I like about the movie is also, uh, yes, these, these guys were young in 1995 in the first movie and in the second movie, but now they're like, they're quite senior. And there's certainly an element on, a couple of elements of that, of the fact, of the aging fact. So they're doing these stunts, they're doing these actions, they're winning, they're doing all this stuff. But at the same time, there's a, there's a recognition that, you know, they're a bit older now. And, uh, and that's also quite interesting, which, um, you know, considering, uh, I'm a very similar age to Will Smith. I was like, oh, that's, that's nice that he's put that in. But anyway, the review of the movie, great. Just go see it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And I can't wait to see it again. I think it was absolutely fantastic. So now let's get back to um, the 9-11. Oh, the way, sorry to interrupt. Are you enjoying the video? Well, make sure you've punched the like button. It helps. And by the way, the 911 did the, uh, I don't know if it's the actual, actual car, because some websites have said it's the actual car from the first movie. Um, and there was a limited edition, so it could, there's not that many of them around, so it could be that it's an actual one. Um, but they're about half a million pounds worth. Um, so that's, you know, that's a significant uh, bit of kit to have in the movie. But it didn't do anything, it just like it was a very brief cameo. But, um, so what, what was it? So it was a 964, 1994, 964, 911 Turbo. Um, like I said, second movie had the 550 Maranello. Uh, that was, I think, 2003 movie. Um, but the 911, the 6, 964 911 Turbo that he had in there. Um, so going back to what I was saying earlier about the fact that the Mike Lowry character was clearly into his cars and so very, very specific. Because even in the second movie, the um, Martin Lawrence shoots the dashboard of the Ferrari and in a, in a scene almost straight after you see him on the phone trying to get an estimate of like what how many how much is it going to cost like straight away he needs to get it fixed you know he needs to get it sorted and even in the third movie he opens the door on um, a fire hydrant you know so uh, Martin Lawrence does and you can see how miffed um, uh, Mike Larry Will Smith is as any owner of such a car would be um, and in the very first movie, and this is the quote from the first movie, um, he says, he explains, it's a $105,000 car, it happens to be one of the fastest production cars on the planet, 0 to 60 in 4 seconds, it's a limited edition. He actually says that 
it's almost like an ad in the first movie, you know. But it just reaffirms the fact that, you know, he's really um, quite particular about his car. So, the 99 Turbo, one of the fastest cars on the planet. Now, if you remember in that movie, in the climax scene, it went up against a Cobra. And literally like a death-defying race against a Cobra because they had to get through a gap. And it's like whoever was going to be the head was going to be the only person that was going to be able to make it through that gap. So... That 911 Turbo, that original one, 1994 one, had a 3.6 uh, M64 turbocharged engine at 355 horsepower and 520 newton meters or 384 pounds for, of torque. Only 1500 were made, so he was right, it was a limited edition. And um, the 0 to 60 on it was 4 seconds. The top speed on it was 174 miles per hour. So if we negate acceleration for a minute, and we just talk about, because it's fastest, he said it's the fastest car, 174 miles per hour, which is significant. And that, remember, in the 90s, that's proper, proper quick. Having said that, even in America itself, the 1990-1995, so 1990-1995, Chevrolet Corvette ZR1, um, it wasn't quite as quick in the acceleration, the sprint, but it did have a top speed of 180 miles per hour, which of course makes it six miles per hour quicker than the Porsche. So if we hadn't gone up against the Cobra, we'd gone up against the ZR1, they would have lost that race for sure, because that, Porsche, that Corvette was definitely quicker. And of course, it's a master of straight line, which is what that was about. Um, then, of course if they had managed to get it, and it would have been an impossibility, but the fastest car at the time, by quite some margin, the 1992 to 1998 McLaren F1 supercar, zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. I mean, think about that, 3.2 seconds at that. Like nowadays, a lot of supercars, and certainly a lot of electric supercars, that's, that's like, that's a 3.2 seconds, 3.5 seconds, they're just coming out with those figures. But back in the day, 3.2 seconds, 0 to 60 miles per hour. And the top speed, 240 miles per hour. Whew. But yeah, I don't think they would have been racing one of those in the movie. Those are rare even at the time. And now, like you lucky if you've ever seen one in the flesh, in the metal, I should say. Um, so it's a good thing that uh, the baddie in that movie didn't have those cars, but he had a Cobra. But let's look at the Cobra. So say if the Cobra was a real thing, and it probably wasn't, but if it was a real thing, it would have had a Ford uh, 427, that would be a 7-litre V8, um, holly carburetors, 425 brake horsepower, 651 newton metres of torque, about 480 pounds foot, and it had a top speed of 164 miles per hour. So yeah, it was definitely slower than the 964. Uh, however, um, if it had been the uh, 485 brake horsepower SC model, that was capable of 185 miles per hour. So, um, and, also, and also this is probably a replica. But, so it could have been quicker. And also keep in mind that um, in the sequence at the end of the movie, the Cobra already had a head start. So the Porsche was playing catch up. So it had to catch up with it. So it wasn't just a case of who, which is faster from, from a standing point. The Porsche was catching up with it. And it was being driven by uh, Martin Lawrence's character, which had already been established that he wasn't as fast a driver, especially in the first movie, as uh, Mike Lowry was. Mike Lowry was going, punch it, punch it, go for it. But, you know, um, so, so in reality, the fact is that it was certainly, I think he was correct to say, it was one of the fastest vehicles in the on the planet at the time. But would it have won that drag race at the end? Probably not. But who really cares? You know, at the end of the day, it's movie magic, right? That's what it's all about. Uh, both of those cars were great. I mean, how often do you get to see a drag race between a 911 Turbo and an AC Cobra? And, you know, things like this, these action sequences and these movies and this stuff that gets us talking about it. I mean, this is the stuff that adds to the mythological status and the desirability of, you know, vehicles like that. Um, so at the end of the day, who really cares? Who cares what was the fastest car? Was it, was it, was it not? Could it have been done? It doesn't really matter. And similarly, um, you know, all four movies, they do have cars in them. They do have a lot of car action in them. And um, just enjoy it.
just enjoy it and definitely go and see this uh, latest movie and let me know what you think of the movie in the comments below check this out guys it's my book it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you it's a fun political action thriller it's full of cool cars and spectacular action get your copy now at amazon.com shout out time guys thank you so much hey if you enjoy my content why not get involved buy me a coffee you can do that at either of these links or if you're watching on youtube buy me a thanks or take out a membership it all helps it really does